Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Let's start our video with a story in which some entitled Karen tries to manipulate her way into a perfect wedding scenario, only to end up isolated and ignored. Entitled sister would have me lose my job and house to attend her destination wedding. My younger sister has always had issues with entitlement, taking advantage of others, throwing fits and being verbally abusive, and being a miser. Not trying to dispense armchair diagnosis, but she really does check every box of NPD. A few years ago, she announced her engagement to a nice guy who's a pushover. He expressed not wanting to get married for a while, but she proposed to him, not that there's anything wrong with that, and kept pressuring him to get married. He comes from a wealthier family than us and is good with money and investments, perfect combo for her to take advantage of and have someone bankroll her delusions. He wanted a modest local wedding so friends and family could attend. My sister decided she wanted a destination wedding outside the country. At the time, my husband and I didn't have the best paying jobs. He was working on a second degree and we had eminent goals of buying our first home together. We regretfully declined her invitation because the trip would cost us three to four K, which we did not have. It would have to go on a credit card. When we RSVP'd no, she said she and her now husband wanted to pay for everything so we could attend. My husband and I were floored because one, that's a lot of money, and two, my sister has never been one to offer to pay for anything, lol. We accepted her offer with a lot of gratitude. Couple months go by and she asks if my husband and I have booked our airplane tickets and hotels yet and said they just keep getting more expensive the closer they get to the date, you know. Um, what? I've never expected anyone to just give me anything, but my financial situation hasn't changed. We tell her as much, and she says, well, husband and I looked at all the prices a while ago, and it's too much money, so you guys will have to take care of it yourselves. We ignored her and went on with our goals. Months go by, and husband and I both get better jobs and buy our house. Sister comes back and asks again if we purchased our tickets, despite repeatedly telling her no. We tell her again, no, and at this point with our new jobs, we aren't allowed to take time off yet and don't have enough PTO anyway. When I started my job, they offered to honor upcoming events if I needed time off, but I hadn't said I didn't need anything since I already planned on not going to the wedding. We didn't have savings and took on a mortgage, so we can't tack on credit card debt too. I was so annoyed with her constant just figure it out tantrums if you really love me speeches I tried to frame it differently so maybe she could understand. I told her that attending her wedding would mean that we would have to no-show at work, likely lose our jobs, not be able to pay our mortgage, and then lose our house. I said to her, so you're okay with my husband and I losing our jobs and house and risking homeless so we could attend your wedding? Of course, she didn't have a good answer for that, lol. She has no concept of money because she's always manipulated people into paying for her. She's never been able to hold a job. She has no empathy for others, yet thinks she's deserving of special treatment. I don't understand where it came from, because our parents raised us to be hardworking and not to expect crap from anyone. Our parents and my husband and I couldn't afford to attend. Her husband's family could and wanted to go, but she wouldn't allow it because it'd be weird to only have his family there and not mine. She put up a huge paywall and then blamed us for having to elope and went to North Carolina with us. It's honestly been a huge relief after a lifetime of her abuse. ETA. When we accepted her offer to pay for our trip, she had said not to worry about anything at all. She said she would book our flight and hotel and everything and to just sit back and relax because she really wanted us to be present at her wedding. She just gave us dates to put in time off requests at our old jobs. So this is why we didn't buy anything with the intention of her reimbursement and we're surprised when she asked us if we had done that stuff yet. Should have known better, all that's very unlike her. Help her out with the no contact, block her also. You know she's gonna pull the same kind of BS in a few months. Good luck. And our second story. Can you help me? Literally just happened about 20 minutes ago. Woke up this morning and no, out of coffee. That's cool. There's a new seasons in my neighborhood. So I head up there in my sweats and flip flops. It's raining like hell. So I drive up there instead of walking, grab my favorite coffee. Woo. It's on sale. 
and head back out to my car after paying. A middle-aged dude finishes ringing up the same time as me, so we're essentially walking out to the parking lot right next to each other. There's an older lady struggling to pull a cart out of the cart return in the parking lot. The wheel is somehow twisted and caught on a metal rail that's sticking out from the gate thing. She's juggling her purse. She's an old lady, so it's freaking huge. Seriously, what do they put in those things? And some canvas shopping bags yanking on the cart with all her might, all the while getting drenched in the rain. Can you help me? She calls with a desperate smile. Before I can answer, the middle-aged dude literally throws up his arms in annoyance and grouches at her. What part of this outfit looks like I effing work here? Then proceeds to get into his car that's literally parked right next to the cart return. LOL. Seriously? I gotcha, I say as I shoot middle-aged dude a look of contempt, like I might have even mouthed WTF at him. Pull the cart free and wipe the handle and front basket dry for her and help her load her big old purse on top of her canvas bags. Haha, <laughs> you might have better luck trying to grab a dry one from inside, I say, and she laughs and responds, Oh, I'm sure I'd have managed to rile that guy up inside somehow too. We laugh and she thanks me and I get in my car and start to head back home. I realize that where the middle-aged dude had parked, he has to loop all the way around the parking lot to get to the exit. So even though I got into my car after he did, I beat him to the exit. LOL, I'm in no rush, so this is where I just get petty. I see some pedestrians on the sidewalk. They're not super close, but better to be safe than sorry. So I wait for them to get the half block or so. They wave me to go ahead, but I wave and scoff, oh no, no, please, you go. They smile and wave their thanks, and I can see middle-aged dude losing his crap behind me. I make a big show of looking left, then right, then left, then right again, and he blasts his horn at me. I would started to inch out the exit, but proceed to slam to a stop when he honks. I pretend that I'm looking around in panic. You honk, so I must have almost hit something. What was it? What don't I see? He honks again, and I turn in my seat to look at him, and he realized I was the one who helped the cart lady. LOL. He starts flailing his arms, pointing at the road, and yelling. I can't help but laugh at his tantrum. Another car queues up behind him, so I feel I better end it and just exit. I start to turn right and see that he's going to be turning right as well. We're exiting onto a one-lane street, and there's a traffic light about half a block away. I can see the crosswalk ticking down, and right as it hits zero, I punch it and fly out the exit and through the yellow light. He blasts out of the exit behind me. He wasn't fast enough to beat the red. He slams his brakes, and I see him yelling, hitting his steering wheel, honking, and flashing his lights at me. I just laugh and stick my fingers out the window and wave. The coffee was good, but ruining the morning of a complete D-bag? Amazing. I love this story. You did a good deed by helping the old lady with her cart and got a chance to dish out some well-deserved petty revenge on that rude guy. And our next story. Didn't allow my disabled neighbor to park in my driveway. I bought a house a few months ago and moved in last month. The previous owner was a friendly old man that could no longer live alone, so he decided to sell and move in with his daughter. Just to be clear, I put disabled in quotation marks because the lady in question is just really, really overweight, and I'm not sure if that counts as disabled. Now, apparently, he'd been allowing use of his driveway to his disabled neighbor lady largely because street parking is extremely limited, and what little street parking there is is pretty much instantly occupied. What I'm saying is, unless you have a driveway, you end up having to park a good five-minute walk away, and that's the best-case scenario. Obviously, I was unaware of this, so I was surprised to see a large SUV parked in my driveway when I moved in. I ended up having to knock on several doors asking whose car it was because the movers could not stand still on the busy road too long. I figured out it was the neighbor's car, so after a good 10 minutes of knocking, an extremely angry, enormous lady opened the door. I told her to move the car, and she immediately started arguing that the neighbor said it was fine. I told her he moved out, I moved in, and no, it's not fine, and to move it because the movers need to unload my stuff. She begrudgingly did. I ended up seeing her walking back half an hour later, completely wet with sweat. 
Now, a few days later, I went back to work, and lo and behold, the SUV's parked in my driveway again. I go over there again, spend 20 minutes knocking on the door before this lady opens the door again, visibly angry. I tell her to move her car. My driveway is not public parking. She protests, saying her ankles can't take walking the distance and claims I can easily walk. I tell her that while that might be true, it's my damn driveway, and I want to park there myself. Again, she moves her car. Again, I spot her half an hour later, drenched in sweat, making her way home. Well, it happened again a week ago, and this time she wouldn't open her door. I got tired of it and had her SUV towed. She, of course, came to my house to scream at me. I told her to get the hell off my property. A few days later, I had a small fence installed with a lock on it to make sure it didn't happen again. I've since been getting dirty looks from her and one other neighbor, and when I told my mom, she told me I should be nicer to people. I do feel sort of bad, too. She clearly struggles with the walk, after all. Plain and simple, she should get a handicap spot designated for if it really is that much of an issue. And our last story. The HOA sold my beach house. My grandfather owned a large piece of land near several lakes that used to be earthen quarries and now were flooded after they closed, so they became artificial lakes. He got his land after the quarries were closed, and at the time the area was quite far from the city. When the quarries were filled with water, it was a great place for relaxation. My grandfather built a small house on the shore and used it as a summer house and a place for family. Later, when the nearby town started to grow, about 40 years, this place became a suburb with a very good price for land. Luxury homes and townhouses began to appear nearby. At the time, my grandfather was pretty old and not feeling well, so my father became the owner and the one who looked after the place. My family built two more small houses with large panoramic windows and one bedroom overlooking the lakes, which we rented out to vacationers on the lake. We also built one three-bedroom house for family use. The old house was used as a barn and a small storage shed. About five years ago, the real estate company that was building the houses and also acting as the management company for the entire property, sort of like an HOA, decided to buy our land and build a big three-story hotel with a restaurant and spa. The company representatives came to us about once a week and offered some ridiculous prices for this land Sometimes they even raised them by 1%, lol. Although my father categorically replied that he would not sell the land the first time. One day, Karen drove up to our place in two SUVs with some guys, probably security guards. They opened our gate and drove up to the house as the owners. Karen immediately started screaming that her husband was a big money businessman and she had connections at the mayor's office and if we didn't sell the land now, she'd get it for free in a week. My father, my uncle, and my brother decided that now would be a good time to clean the guns in the second floor balcony overlooking the front door. Karen, apparently suddenly realizing she'd forgotten to turn off the iron at home, jumped in the car and quickly drove off with her boys from our land. About six months later, in the winter, my father came to check on the property and saw that a construction crew was taking apart my grandfather's old house. It later turned out that Karen had decided to divorce her husband, the owner of the construction company. She faked the documents on our land, told her husband she bought it from us, and resold it to him. Karen's husband turned out to be not such a bad guy. Now we're waiting for the trial to be over. Our lawyer thinks we'll have enough money to build a couple more houses to rent out to our clients. And Karen's facing several years in prison. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.